morning. Good news today. It rained this morning, last night, early this morning. Bad news. It was less than a tenth, and it'll last till about ten o'clock, so back to laying pipe. We're gonna fire up the traveler today. All right, well, I am taking the gator up to the field where we're irrigating. We're gonna get ready to lay pipe. Phil's gonna bring a pickup up and help me this morning, so. Shouldn't take too terribly long, but it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna take us a little bit. If you missed yesterday's video, here's our pump and generator set up at the river. Um, basically, we've got a tube down into the water there and a uh, big pump, electric motor, use our generator to run it. And we got the pipe out and down. Dug this little trench here. We're going to put a bridge over that so we can drive across it. And then we just got to keep laying pipe right down our center path all the way across the field. So... That is uh, first thing there this morning. It's easiest to have somebody drive the tractor real slow and then somebody walk alongside, set all the pieces off, and then we'll come back after they're all laid out and uh, put them back together. I thought I had some GoPro footage to put here. I don't. Sorry. Okay, so obviously we got the trailer emptied up there, laid all that pipe out. Uh, we came back to load up the rest of our pipe. This is kind of where we keep the stuff that doesn't fit on the trailer. Uh, we got some on. Phil's got to spin the trailer around. The rest of it goes on the other side. And we're going to load this up and take it back up there, and then we'll start putting it together. Well, we're making progress. We've gone all the way from the pump way back there down to there. We need a short piece off of our trailer, and we got to lay the rest of that out yet. We're getting there, maybe half of it together. Okay, pipe is laid. We'll drive it so you guys can see. It's, it's 4,170 feet of irrigation pipe, six inch aluminum. That's almost eight tenths of a mile from the river to the end of the pipe. They are uh, 30 foot long sticks except for a few like that one that are short uh, because of where the risers need to be. I'll show you those when we get the traveler up here and how it works. But yeah, we, we just pump, pump water through it. It's even trying to rain a little bit at the moment, which I'm not gonna complain about. At least it wasn't 90 degrees and hot and sunny when I was trying to do this. Would have been worse yesterday. One thing I did notice on this end of the field where we're kind of up on the sand ridge, I'm still seeing a lot of that sulfur deficiency, the striping in the leaves. So I wasn't going to put any fertilizer in on this pass because the corn's still small. It doesn't need the nitrogen right now. There's plenty on there, um, but it would appear we need some sulfur. So I am going to put some ATS in at least on half of this field. I don't know. We'll see if we do it all or not. We'll see how much we actually have to irrigate because we'll get started here today because it's not raining much now. Um, but if we get rain before we finish, we get rain before we finish, and that's a good thing. I do have a couple more things we've got to do before we pull the traveler up here. One, we've got to get our bridges and put those in place. And I've got to get a grounding rod for the generator put in and get the wiring all hooked up on that. So that's the next step and what I'm going to get now. There's my bridges. We're going to need a backhoe to get them up there. Them are heavy. There! My bridge is in place. I think it will work. One more thing while I'm up here with the backhoe, I decided to touch up the uh, crossing here so I can drive through there with stuff because it's a lot faster to go this way and cross the river to get to my pump which is right on the other side over there then uh, come down all the lanes and around so I got that we should be good there I'll probably get my truck stuck crossing it at some point but whatever so anyway uh, back to the farm with this I'm probably gonna go get something to eat for lunch real quick and then come back and uh, we'll get the traveler up here 
Well, the rain this morning is gone. Kept the dust down for morning. But, uh, yeah. All right, I've got um, my grounding rod that I need to get the generator grounded. And I'm coming back here to put that in. Phil's going to come pick me up to pick up and take me back so we can get the traveler and bring that up here. And then we'll have everything we need to fire it up. Corn's not hurting today because we did have just a touch of rain and not having heat and sun beating on it, but uh, it is supposed to warm back up and uh, there's chances of rain for the weekend, but that's far enough off yet that I want to get as much water on as we can and we're going we're gonna to try and get started here today. we got to get this traveler brought around and check the tires on it, grease it, make sure the little motor on it runs, and all that good stuff before we head up there. Okay, I uh, got the tires checked. They're okay. I am changing the oil in this little Honda engine that's on here. Um, this is for the rewind. It, it's the motor that reels the thing back in. I, I'll explain all this once we get it up and running, but uh, that needs to get checked because this motor sits there and runs all day. Uh, and then this bolt here was broken, so I put a new bolt in there. Again, part of the rewind system and the speed control. We need to fill up our gas tank before we head up there. Make sure we got all the tools and everything else that we need. And uh, go through it and grease it. There are a few grease points. Mostly on the turntable underneath. Uh, there's one there. I think there's one in here somewhere. So we'll hit all those. Well, it took a few minutes and a shot of ether. But I got it running after almost two years of not. So, uh... I think this is all ready to go. Still fighting the steering on this, so it's gonna be a slow trip up there again. That's okay. Technically, this thing's only supposed to go 10 miles an hour anyway, top speed. Okay, we made it to the field, and we are in position for the first run. As you can see, this uh, whole thing is on a turntable and it rotates, so we spun it uh, 90 degrees. We're gonna pull this gun cart down our first lane there, and uh, that's what that's that's what will be first. We may need to rotate it just a little bit to square it up. Um, but we've got to put these stabilizer legs down. We've got to lower this gun cart down and take our chains off, and then we've got to walk all the way down there to the river and get our other tractor to pull it out. Before we walk, we also need to hook up our uh, water supply hose. I, I'm not sure it's going to reach. I didn't want to block this last path if I didn't have to, but I got a short piece of pipe to put in here if we need it. Um, but basically, some of these pipe have these risers on it, so we put this on there, and it clamps on, and then we use this flexible hose here to connect it to there. I'll show you in a second like this and we made it just barely but our hose was the right length so then this handle kind of grabs onto the top of that uh, riser and uh, opens it up so the water can come out so we're gonna run that all the way out and then start walking that is the third time i've had to walk that whole thing this morning i made it oh yeah i'm gonna start the generator up and let it warm up while we go pull that out. So this generator is uh, it's 190 kW kilowatt. Uh, it ran our grain system for, I don't know, 10 years maybe. And we retired it a year ago when we bought our new generator. It's a uh, 8.1 liter deer power tech engine. Same engine that's in our 8300, I believe. Eh, maybe not our 8300, but some 8300s. We've never had too much trouble with a little bit with some of this. This key switch has been replaced, little things, but. She fired right up after setting for a year and a half. Oh, I should probably hook the electrical stuff up before I start it. Dang it. No, no, we're good. 
main breaker is off, so we're safe to hook that stuff up. And I'm not going to touch anything anyway, but we got to get our cords down here. So we've got a uh, quick connect on here. Plug the colors into the colors. It's, yeah, yeah, you get it. Just like that. Now when I push the button over there, the pump will spin. So now we drive this tractor down our center lane and we've got a we've actually got to take the lane before the one where the traveler's at now, go out to the end, drive down and then back up down the lane where we're gonna pull the traveler out because we can't we can't make the turn without driving through the corn. Yeah. And we could probably drive through the corn, it's short, it would be okay, but I'm gonna go around anyway. Um, and we'll back down that lane, then we pull the gun out and yeah. Backing up. This first run's gonna be a pretty short one, but that's okay. For starting out, that's okay. Tractor's back down the lane. Then we hook up our chain, it's hooked to the gun cart. Make sure that these are unhooked. So that's ready to come out. Now we gotta check our uh, drive system over here. This is a brake, we need to release that. And this is to engage the, the gearbox and we need that to be disengaged. Okay, it is ready to be pulled out. It's a pretty slow speed limit pulling this thing out. Three miles an hour. Sorry the window's so dirty. But basically we're just unrolling it. In a minute here, yeah, we'll get that wheel on the ground. drag this hose out until we get to the end of our lane down here. So this gun will shoot water about, not quite 200 feet, but about 200 feet. So really we want to stop short of these ends because I don't need to blow it way past right back into the ditch. So we're going to start slowing down here. Somewhere in here, we'll stop. Okay, now we're just gonna back up a little bit, take the tension off. Now we've gotta unhook our uh, chain, put that back up here, and then we've gotta put these stabilizer legs down. Just like that. Another thing I wanna double check is the pattern on our gun. So this is gonna rotate until it gets to there, then it's gonna flip, come back the other way until it gets to somewhere in there, wherever that just tripped. There. So there, that's a little too far. there that's not too bad we'll watch it when it's going we can adjust it again but uh, okay so now we're gonna push it straight so that it's not pushing to the side when it starts time to go start up the pump okay gonna be just a minute more before we start the traveler up I forgot to bring an extension cord for the electric for the uh, vacuum pump gotta go back to the farm and get that and I'm gonna take the gator up because it's easier to run back and forth between the traveler and the pump all right, got our cord. We've got to prime our pump, which means we need to suck water up into that pipe. So we're gonna use our vacuum pump for that. Unfortunately, I've got to use two hands. Well, I can get started with two hands and then I can hold my phone. Hang on. It's loud, but that pump is sucking air out. It uses oil out of this bottle to lubricate it. There's a valve I've got to hold there. And then as soon as water starts coming out, I close this valve and unplug it. There's really a switch there, but the switch is bad. I need to get it fixed. Do you guys know what would help with um, priming the pump? If you put the dang drain plug in. Pretty hard to get a vacuum when you got a big hole in the pump. Oh well, I figured it out. 
Let's try this again. There, that's what we're waiting for. 20 seconds. Once I figured it out, ran for two minutes for me trying to figure out why the heck it wasn't getting water in it, but now our pipe is full, so we are ready to open our gate valve and fire up the pump. Now, I do have a uh, timer in here. We're just gonna set it at an, okay, an hour and a half to start with. Um, we'll set that. I gotta figure out how long it's gonna take this first run, um, how many feet we pulled it out and all that stuff, and then we'll come back and adjust the timer. So, okay, I think we should be ready to push this button right here. Pushing air. Come on. There we go. So this handles up, which means there's water coming through. Clearly we're leaking a lot here. It's gonna leak at all of the fittings until we get pressure. And we're not gonna get pressure until it's coming out the end of the gun way down there, which means our whole pipe has to fill up. Uh, sometime I'll do the math and figure out how many gallons are in that pipe, but it's a lot. Six inch cylinder, three quarters of a mile long. It's a lot of water. It takes like, I don't know, four or five minutes for water to get from here to the end of the gun. Okay, everything here looks okay. I'm gonna get in the gator, run down there, and we're gonna watch it on that end. Well, I beat the water here. Our uh, supply line is still flat. The valve is open, so. There should be air coming through there. Yeah, the air's pushing out all the seals. So it's not coming down here, but uh, yeah, now we wait. We wait for the water. Wow, this is taking a long time. Yeah, getting close. I can hear it bubbling some water that's still in the traveler. That's air coming out of the seals on that connection. Probably gonna get a fair amount leak out at the, the pivot up there. We're getting a lot of air right now. Here it is, here it is, right there. Okay, now we gotta fill all the hose on the, the reel. Let's see if our pressure gauge is registering anything. Yep, okay, pressure gauge is climbing, we're up to 60. Oh, we got a blowout down there. One of our uh, risers is uh, loose. We'll have to fix that. Pressure's up to 80. Pretty quick, you ought to see it shooting out. There it is. Okay, now we just gotta build some more pressure. Well, we're up to uh, 130. There it is. walk out there I think I was wrong about four or five minutes that seriously had to be like 10 10 to 15 minutes it took for water to get from our pump out to the nozzle crazy it is quite windy which is not ideal for irrigation uh, this type of irrigation especially it's gonna spray or mess with the pattern quite a bit but I expect the wind to die down here towards the evening and uh, Ah, we gotta get water on, so we're going anyway. Although, I'm gonna wait for it to go the other way because I'll get soaked if I walked out there now. Okay, quickly, while this thing is on that side and the wind is blowing it somewhat away from me instead of at me, we're just gonna go out here and check this. Uh, pressure gauge, make sure everything looks okay. It's a lot of water. Looks like we're a little over 60. 64 pounds at the gun here. I believe it's a 1.38 inch nozzle. I've got a chart to tell me how many gallons per minute that is, but we should be somewhere between 400 and 450 gallons per minute that we're shooting out of that right now. Dang impressive is what it is. 
So we're shooting for an inch of rain, which uh, we set that based on our retrieval rate. So we'll have to get that started up as soon as we walk back up there. That's the plan. So on our hose, it has uh, markings to tell us how much we pulled out. So 472 feet, basically, is what we've got. Uh, so I'll have to do some math. But uh, we want it to travel about 30 inches per minute is our real speed. So that gun will move in 30, 30 inches every minute. And that equals about an inch an hour, depending on how much water. But that's close. That's just from experience. We'll double check all that stuff in the book when I get a minute. So, in order to start that up, basically, we just start up our uh, motor here. It should start. i got to check my safeties. Let's see. I had it running. There it goes. Okay. And then right here is the speedometer. And that says 30, which you would think is right, but it's not. Because this thing adjusts the speed depending on how much, um, how many layers of hose there are on the reel. So if it's all the way out and we're on the base layer, 30 is right and that'd be the actual speed. But because we're on the third layer, we got to come to our chart here and say third layer, the base layer I want 30, so come down, we need it to say 24. So we're going to adjust that down until it says 24, which is right there, 24. So now our hose should be moving 30 inches a minute, which is pretty slow. I spray painted some marks on there so I can see from a long ways away if this thing is actually turning or not. And uh, we just let her sit there and idle. Still running 130 pounds at the, at the inlet of the Traveler. And uh, yeah, we gotta go see if we can fix that one blowout we've got there. I've got some wrenches in the gator. And uh, go check our pump again. But now we just sit here and let her go until uh, it reels itself in. So let me do some math quick. So 474 feet. Divided by 2.5 feet per minute is 189 minutes that this will take to reel itself in, which is just over three hours. So we'll look at our clock, and we'll plan on being back here in three hours. Here's our blowout. I'm just going to take this and try and turn that screw on the top and seal it up. Fortunately, the wind is working with me here. There. That spot was extra thirsty. It got a little advanced early drink. Everything still looks good here. We're running over 200 pounds at the uh, pump here. So it'll sit there and purr. I do want to get some ATS, some ammonium thiol sulfate. Um, we're going to put some in this tank and pump it on because our corn is showing a sulfur deficiency. So we need to add some. When we first started doing this, people would always ask me if we were sucking all the water out of the river. I'm sure you guys will ask the same thing. Well, you tell me. Can you tell a difference from there to there? Yeah, neither can I. It's amazing how much water flows down this river, even when we're really dry. So everything looks good there. Can't quite see the bottom of the, the screen just because the water's moving so quick and the reflection's off of it. But uh, hey, I guess we're good to go. All right, I am... Uh, I do need to get the tractor back down there going the other way because when that's done tonight we'll spin it around and pull it the opposite direction down the other lane um, so I got to get the tractor back down there but uh, I'm gonna take the gator home right now and we're gonna get a load of fertilizer to put in there because I want to start putting that on I think we can make it I think we're going for it full send I got some ATS up here. I only brought a little over 300 gallons because that's probably more than enough for this whole field. I'm only going to put two and a half gallons per acre on. Be a little over seven pounds of sulfur. Uh, we'll probably put more on later, but it's still really early, so I don't want to overdo it right now. Um, 
since we don't have a pump on here because we never got that fixed that took it off but the motor was bad or had water and i don't know he hasn't got it put back on yet so i'm just gonna let that sit there and gravity drain into there uh it will be fine for what we're doing now and uh yeah i'm going home for a couple of hours we'll be back a little after eight just real quick to address a few of the things that I'm sure I'm going to get asked on this video. The pump puts out about 400 to 450 gallons per minute. Um, there are 175-ish acres in this field. We can't irrigate it all. We can probably do 125-ish of it. Maybe, a, no, 135-ish, maybe 140, somewhere in there. So we'll get most of it, but not all of it. Um, as far as pumping out of the river and water permits or anything like that, uh, there's nothing that we have to do ahead of time, um, but we do have to report our usage, which we will do. Uh, I keep notes, very detailed notes of date, length of travel or run, time, amount we're putting on, all that stuff uh, for every run that we make so that I have those records. So. Uh, whatever else you guys have questions about, just leave it in the comment section and I will address it. Uh, I'm going to be doing this until it rains and probably uh, dozens of times this summer you will see me pull. Well, you won't see me because I won't film at all, but be, I will be up here pulling that traveler out, moving it, all that good stuff. So uh, get used to it. Just got back up to the field. Well, good news and bad news. Good news is... Um, our timer works. The bad news is, I forgot to set it for three hours. So we got about an hour, hour and 15 minutes left on the uh, run that we started. That, uh... Yeah. So, we'll fire it back up and we're gonna sit here and watch it for an hour. I'm gonna edit YouTube videos and then we'll move the traveler. Well, we are back up and running. Um, but the good news is it gives me time to walk back and get that tractor and get it lined up down here, which I didn't do earlier because I wanted to get home. So kids are in bed, or being put to bed right now, so I got time. It's not the end of the world. They were getting some air out. Oh well. The good news is, one, the wind has died down, so it's not affecting our pattern quite so bad. And two, this next run going that way is close to a full pull. It won't be quite, but that means it's almost an eight hour pull. And by starting it at, uh, it'll be 10 o'clock instead of 8.30, um, I won't have to get up quite so much in the middle of the night. It'll be closer to the morning and we can just come when we get to work in the morning and reset it. It'll have been done for an hour or two, no big deal. Through the tree tunnel we go. Hey, there used to be a beehive there. Huh, guy packed up and left. There's something peaceful about sitting here, watching the water run. Nice calm night, sunset. Well, I was just getting my phone out to say, well, we've about made it back in. You think the pump is gonna shut off? We were about two feet short. I think that's okay. So, uh, now it's time to uh, get it spun in. I'm gonna start, the, there's a Murphy switch on here that shuts that um, rewind motor off if the pump loses pressure. So, uh, because I need it to just finish that two feet, I'm going to push, there's a, a reset button on that. I'm going to push that and get it to rewind in, and then we'll start the process of getting this thing spun around. Okay. So we got to clip our chains on here and we've got to lift our stabilizer legs and lift the gun cart up. Okay. That is up. Now we got to shut our, uh, valve here so we can disconnect our hose. Okay, we're gonna disconnect our hose from the traveler here, which is gonna make it muddy, wet, mess. Uh, eh, not so bad, but there's gonna be a bunch of water run out there. Okay, now we gotta spin it. There's a latch here, just pull it out and hook it. And then we come out here and push.
Okay, get it so it's square with the rows. About right there, we may have to uh, pull ahead a little bit. But now we gotta undo our lat or uh, relatch. Latch. There. Okay, now it's the same thing on the other side. Stabilizer legs down, lower the gun cart, unhook it, and pull it out. Okay, gun cart is down, stabilizer legs are down. Let me make sure our brake is off, which it is because I didn't put it on. Disengage. I hooked up our supply line. We gotta just make sure it's laying okay. Not kinked like that. That should be fine. I'm gonna open the valve up and then we hook up our traveler to the tractor and start pulling. I'm not sure how, but it appears that neither of the two rear lights on this tractor work. The, the switch says that they're on. They're not. That's, that's a problem. Gun cart is set. We'll get back in the tractor and go back down the next lane. Okay, that tractor will sit there until morning because that's the next pull that we'll do first thing in the morning so we're gonna walk back down here to the truck uh, shut that other tractor off the 4020 and uh, go back and start up our pump and then we get to drive all the way back down here again and start up the rewind on the traveler and then we can go home okay uh, it's gonna take six and a half hours for this run um, gotta run our primer just to be sure that we're still primed. We're good to go. Alright, we gotta go start to rewind. Unfortunately, six and a half hours from now is about five o'clock in the morning. 445. Uh, so I have to decide, do I want to come and do this at 4.45 in the morning? Or do I just let it shut itself off and come when I get here at 7.30 after I send the kids off? Or do I slow it down so that it takes longer and just put a little bit more water on? Okay, well, I was doing a little bit of math and... Uh, I've decided to go with the slow it down approach because I think uh, being as far away from the pump as we are, we're, we've got some pressure loss with all the pipe that we have because uh, we're only putting about 64, maybe 65 uh, pounds of pressure at the gun, at the nozzle. And uh, according to my chart, at that pressure and that size nozzle, that's about 435 gallons per minute. And... Uh, Based on the number of acres that we are covering, length times width, um, at 435 gallons per minute, uh, with my retrieval speed the way that I had it, we were only putting on a little under eight tenths of an eight, uh, inch per acre. And uh, I wanna shoot for an inch, so if I slow it down to take nine hours, uh, which puts it at seven o'clock tomorrow morning, or 7.15, um, that'd be like 1.1 inches of rain. So I'm gonna go with that approach and that solves my problem of having to come in the middle of the night. Hopefully as we get closer to the pump and the next hookups down there, uh, our pressures will increase and we can speed it back up. But we'll just keep that uh, calculation handy so that I can uh, figure out how much we're putting on a little bit more accurately. I am keeping a spreadsheet record of all this too that will calculate it for me, so. Um, we're good here. I do need to run back to the pump now and up my timer, and I'm not going to forget this time. Video evidence of it on the 9. We're good here. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I'm glad to have this running. I hate that we have to do it right now. I really wish we would have just gotten some rain. So, But it is what it is. Uh, we are going to do some different stuff tomorrow. We're going to get this going first thing in the morning, but then we should have a decent run and uh, be able to go work on some other stuff. we got to get Dan Hydra's bar cleaned up. That's on my uh, list of things to do tomorrow. So uh, hit the like and subscribe buttons for me, please. Again, leave comments down below, questions if you've got them, and uh, we'll be sure and answer them. See you tomorrow.